Oh dear. There's so many ways to share something. There's so many elements to touch on. Almost every site I look at challenges me with these different questions. Should I look at the impossibility to build such ruins? Sometimes not ruins, sometimes in great shape, but sometimes destroyed, damaged in ways that don't make sense. Our history, especially in Western North America, is very short according to the experts. And yet, even according to them, much of the explanations for these abandoned sites from a past people have no explanation. Today I do another boots on the ground, we're going to Colorado, to the Cardiff Coke Ovens. I thank you for joining me, I love you all, God bless, and welcome. So the Cardiff Coke Ovens, here I've punched it into the search engine, and at this point there is no Wikipedia for this site. I'm sure there will be after this video, but as of now, here's what we get. 1888, and let's click on the first one. Cardiff Coke Ovens. The Coke Ovens are associated with the industrial history of the Roaring Fork Valley. The ovens processed coal into coke for use of smelters. The presence of an unusual venting system in three of the ovens may provide clues to the functioning of a subsurface coal ignition system. So they don't know. And this historical explanation is pretty stupid. Here we go. In the first sentence, they tell us what it was. In the second sentence, they tell us they don't know. Seems to be some strange venting system that is not usually present in coal and coke production. They're confessing there is a subsurface system, or there may be. And there is, I'll show you pictures. So here you go. Here is history for this site. I initially saw it on Google Maps. It's funny actually because I went to another site down here, the Redstone Coke Ovens, and essentially drove right past this other site, which is just south of Glenwood Springs. And we can see it down here if we zoom in. The main highway is right here. And over the river and on the edge of the mountain, we have this site. And this is what it looks like, uninteresting from above because most of it is buried. Just the faces poking out. You can see the holes at the top here. And pretty unbelievable. When I show you this, a lot may become apparent. For example, the site across the street here that has been scraped clean. Now an airport strip over here. And the site next to the ruins, just some junk fest that has also been scraped. Not just scraped, but completely excavated deep into the mountain. So when you arrive to this site, this sign is what you get. The reviews on Google were actually very telling. They kind of prompted me to come out here. Here we see someone saying, It's amazing to walk and hike and take pictures, but the parking lot was hard to find. Also, it's sad that there's construction 20 feet from this historic site. And no doubt, I propose they have built on top of a lot of this. Here someone says, the ovens are fantastic to see and part of the area's history. However, the site lacks resources. The parking area is a dirt pull-off. A lot of graffiti in the ovens and vegetation growth makes access a little difficult. 
The site needs resources to improve the experience. Would recommend you see it before it's reclaimed by time and vandalism. Here someone says, what a nice surprise. Too bad the city is ignoring this little piece of history. It will probably be gone in a few years. Easy to drive past if you're not looking for it. Not enough information at the location. And what I thought was interesting is this site has been ignored until 2022. Here you go. The Cardiff Coke Oven Stabilization Project received $34,000 in 2022 to install fencing, create signs, remove graffiti, remove vegetation, and plant grass. There we go. 2022. Oh, maybe we should protect this place. And then you saw earlier two sentences for the history. Here already, they give us a little more, talking about the trains. 1888, built by the Grand River Coal and Coke Company. And all of these ovens share a similar characteristic. Somebody recently has smashed the fronts in of every single one. And the smashing is very fresh, revealing fresh brick, where all the other brick is old. It looks like 300 years old, buried. And this is the stupidest explanation. Once the coal was lit and the door was walled up, so there's no door. You don't just say the door was walled up. Completed this brick igloo with no door, just walled it up. So you have to light the coal and then you have to finish the wall. After you lit the coal and then it burns for 48 hours, they seem to leave out that you're going to have to smash in the wall according to their stupid explanation. So there's that sign. And here we can begin to get a glimpse of what we're dealing with here. So here we go. They didn't give a shit until 2022 and suddenly warning security cameras, brand new signs, know this, know that. Great. Listing it on the historic registry in 1996. So again, I want to stress my dilemma. Where to approach this from? Was it really built and forgotten? Reconsumed by nature? Does it really make sense to light the coal and then finish walling it off and then smash into it 48 hours later? And again, so many of these kilns are different on the inside. This is one that is very anomalous. Seldom seen. This beautiful round port going into the mountain. Super, super, super heat damaged. And you'll remember even in their explanation, they were baffled as to why they had these strange, mysterious ventilation ports. Even they don't know. This is way more complex than some 1800s industrial application. I mean, right away they seem like igloos. I'm not sure if the natives are still building igloos. But it's interesting that that is something that we're all familiar with. A people building ice block dome houses. And since they don't know the mainstream, really, I feel absolutely free to question what these may have been. This brick was so shiny and vitrified and damaged, it almost looks like some paint. Here I poke in a little closer. You can really see the condition of the brick. You can see it dripping above. And look at this beautiful port in a mountain. Here I look a little deeper. Many of these ports were filled in, but it was interesting to get a good look. Again, I think we're beyond needing to defend the idea that a brick can melt. I mean, I think it's clear by now. And here we can see that even this one has been filled in, what seems like recently. And as it turns out, this is more fascinating than even I thought it was. Like all of us, I'm limited to how far I can travel. And even in a vehicle, it's very difficult to drive around even a region of your country. I'm always imagining my trek on a horse and wagon and the difficulties I would encounter before roads, all the mountains I have to go over, 
rivers I have to cross, snow. And these factors are dismissed by the mainstream like they weren't an issue. Like people could just make brick igloos in the middle of nowhere. Look at this construction. You wouldn't even think this would support what it does. Such a thin mortaring. Pure mathematics here. There's a mountain on top of these. And here we see brick, very vitrified. And I think it becomes pretty clear that there was more to this structure. Again, they told us they would wall it up after they fired the coal. But what about all this debris on both sides? Was that necessary? Intermingled with bricks. They've restored, or landscaped, I should say, around maybe 20 of these. And yet there's hundreds that just continue and disappear into nature, turning into mountain. Here again, like I was saying, all the extra rocks thrown on top of the brick. Really? I mean, I know that it's built well, and they were clearly confident that it would support itself, but why risk it? Would you really stack these blocks on top of the brick? Or are these blocks the result of cataclysmic damage? And these ovens actually just pockets of survival, preserved, because they were actually under the building. And that's kind of what I ultimately conclude if you don't know, I live off the grid, and I have a septic system, basically a 1500 gallon tank that all my wastewater goes into. And after it goes into the tank, it continues to flow into what they call infiltrators. And the bigger your system, the more infiltrators you have. And this just allows the water, after it's run through the tank, to drain off into this contained system. For a single family house, you need about 200 feet of these infiltrators, which basically look like arches. Each one is an arch, and you piece them together. And at this site, we could see a connection with these, what they were calling the mysterious ventilation system, I realize may have been the waste disposal, the bottom of the hill or building. Every place I've found these has been at the base of a mountain. It's no different with big cities. If you look at the sewer canals underground, major cities, they're beautiful. They're brick vaults, tunnels to this day. Some of them are subways and then some become sewage tunnels and they're absolutely beautiful. If you were to visit this site, you would quickly discover this is the stupidest place in this time period to build these ovens. All the action is on the other side of the river, and I've often talked about how the vegetation all throughout this realm is so young, less than 200 years of growth. And even here, like what, there was nothing? They came out here and there was no vegetation. They built this and then a carpet of growth swallows it up in a short amount of time, buries it, cooks it, and then overtakes it. It's forgotten. Again, you have to remember, in 2022, they began <laughs> preserving this. Nobody cared. Here we can see a giant bird, an ibis or something. So let's look at some more of these. I tried to document as many as I could. This one was really fascinating because it had like a yellow, vitrified, glassy inside. Really beautiful in a strange way. And here again I zoomed in so we can see that this is just the edge of each brick. This is what can become of a brick. Almost looking like candy. This one is really interesting again with this port. And sometimes the brick is just blackened and not as beautiful and yellow as the other one we looked at. You can see some examples of that here. Also vitrifying, but bubbling and seeming to change colors. Again, explaining a lot of the beautiful formations in Utah. Explaining them as 
heat damaged structures. I mean, my point is any more heat and this becomes a colorful blob, natural. These kilns all over offer some of the best examples of the transitioning of building materials back to nature. You can see how when the bricks get really hot, they just eventually turn into a block. They eventually fuse and the lines become difficult to make out. Here's just a still I took of a little chunk. Essentially, what the crust on the outside of the kilns looks like. And like I was saying, on the outside, there's just a lot of blockage. Some looks like stone, but some has been preserved. And they're very large blocks, like we can see here. Looking like very old concrete blocks. Here again, one of those blocks, some bricks, and some of this blackened and yellow blobbage. Again, these fibers, probably just some kind of moss. This was really interesting. Like I always say, check out the edges as far as you can. And this is the far south edge of the site. And what I could see is more kilns buried. There's one here, there's one here. And I have some footage of Chief running around up here. Here you can see an arch. And he just scrambles right up it. So this baby seems to show what it must have looked like in its discovered state. And then here I go down even further, close to this junk fest neighbor, Sanford and Sons situation. And we see another arch here. There we go. We see the crust on top, the cooked crust. So this has just been lost to time. I mean, we see that they're making an effort to clean this site up, but this is ridiculous. Completely buried. This is nothing. When I go up to the north side, it really becomes apparent to how time and cataclysm has swallowed this place up. A little more damage here, turning black, blobbing up, fusing these brick faces, and I'm pretty happy with my discoveries. I had a great time, but couldn't help but feel like maybe it was boring. I mean that it would be a boring video, but maybe I was just tired from all the travel, really having no one to discuss this with in real time. But there was so much to discover and question here. The mainstream offered me very little. The pictures on the internet were also very poor. Here I poke into this one and we have a different what they would call a ventilation system. This one really seeming like a little chimney or a little dwelling or igloo. Everything again super vitrified and shiny on the outside. But what I found interesting was this one had preserved brick, unheated as if there was a door on the face. This one didn't look like any of the other ones. Still dropped down and the hole had been filled in like the others. But this was a good clue as to what this may have been. The floors all seem hollow in these supposed ovens everywhere I go. And you can see that they originally went down underground much further. Here I'm going to take you in for a closer look to show you what I'm talking about. You see that the heat damage is on the outside, not on the inside. You can see that it's been filled in, but yet the brick is in great shape. It seems like a hinge may have been over on this side, and it's been ripped off. A door has been ripped off. Or perhaps the door was just cracked, enough to allow heat to cook this side, to vitrify it. But it seems to have preserved the inside of this box. The mortar, the brick, everything in great shape. Here's the top of it. You have to remember, this is in the side of a mountain. I hope to insert drone footage several times. But this doesn't look like it had anything to do with a Coke oven. Now, I drop the camera below this opening, and what we can see is another opening. Another set of arched bricks, just barely poking out here, and more structure. You can also see how it goes down. Somebody was trying to excavate, it seems like. We can see the condition that it was found in 
on the right side, and then we can see somebody's attempt to go down further, revealing more blockage and structure. Totally unnecessary if it was only to cook this industrial component. Here you can see what it looks like across the street. Still an industrial area. Here looking up at the top from the inside. Here we can see our first stamp. It was actually difficult to find at first, but one I've never seen before. D. And here again the crust on the outside with little bricks intermingled. How old is all of this? I mean really showing the age of Pompeii. And like I said, you could live in one of these. It looks like somebody had a little camp in this one. A little fire pit and a box of supplies. And I don't blame them. Especially when you see that there's hundreds of these. Totally neglected and forgotten by time. Here we can see a tree growing in the center of one. And it looks like it was growing in hair and poking through the hole before it was smashed into. And we hiked all the way to the edge, like I said, until they disappeared into the mountain. And eventually there was an apartment complex. And I have no doubt that they built on top of these. When you look at it from the Google, you can see that this path continued in both directions. But for this week, I thank you all for joining me. God bless. I love you all. And I'll see you next week.